5.5 and 5.6 are pretty much the same. You're still applying the trig functions to real life situations. Um, the only difference is in 5.6, they decide to tell you that um, the independent variable will not be dealing with degrees anymore. So you're not involving angles, you're now dealing with something else like time. We're going to go over two different examples in this tutorial. The first of which is the snowshoe hare and the lynx cycle. So this is uh, your classic predator prey example. And what you have here is a situation where if you have um, an increasing population in prey, obviously your predator population is going to be very happy and they're going to increase as well. Then if they increase a little bit too much, your prey is going to be affected and they're going to decrease, which then starves out your predator and they're going to decrease as well. So these guys are pretty much very closely linked. Okay, so this question says that they started measuring the number of prey beginning at 1990. So n represents the number of prey and it's dependent upon um, the time that they started, I guess, counting. Okay, so um, the first question asks, what was the population of prey in 1990? Okay, so 1990, since it's our base year, we're talking about the initial, initial time. So t equals to zero. That means that we're going to sub zero wherever we see a t into the equation, and we want to figure out what n at zero is. Okay, so just your basic bed mass, you have 250 times sine of all of this, and then plus 500 at the end. You're going to do the multiplication first, but before you do the multiplication, you actually need to know what sine of 90 times 0 is. So 90 times 0 is just 0, and sine of 0, and once you think about the graph, if you don't have a calculator, should be 0. Okay, and then the 250 times 0 plus the 500 should give you 500. Easy enough, the initial population should be 500 prey. Going on to the next question. When did the population reach a maximum? And what was that maximum at that time? Okay, so I want you to think about it. If you have an amplitude of 250, that should be your max. However, you've also gone up 500. So that's a 250, your amplitude, plus your vertical shift. Your maximum number of prey is 750. Okay, so we answered this question right here. What is the maximum? Now, when did that maximum happen? That's a little bit different. You're going to have to take the 750 and sub it into your n, and then you're going to solve for t. Okay, so this is how you do it. You're going to start bringing things to the other side and things that are very, very um, far away from the t. So all this stuff is really close together. Let's bring the 500 over first. We subtract, get the 250. All of this is together, the sine 90 and the t. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide out this 250 and then I'm left with 1 on this side, and the 250 has disappeared on that side. This is the tricky part. I want the t by itself, and it's really closely stuck to that 90. Okay, so I'm going to have to get rid of that sign and bring it to the other side. In order to do that, I'd have to do the inverse of sign. So I want you to think about the sign graph. Where was sign ever 1? Well, at 90 degrees, that's when the sine graph was at 1. It had a maximum of 1. So then the 90 I'm just going to replace there, and the sine disappears. Okay. Then what we're going to do is divide both sides by 90, and I get t equals to 1, which means that our base um, starting point, our base year, plus an additional year, 1991, is when it reached a maximum of 750. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and find a minimum now. Okay, so when did the population reach a minimum and how many prey was that minimum? Again, the amplitude has a negative 250 as your minimum, but then it's been sh vertically shifted up 500, so we're just going to add those two together, and it looks like the minimum number of prey is 250. Then we do the exact same thing, we're going to sub it into the equation and solve for t. So again, move the 500 over, it becomes negative, we subtract, it becomes negative 250, and then we divide 250 from each side and we get negative 1. So taking the inverse of sine of negative 1, 
we're going to think about the graph and at 270 degrees that's when sine was negative 1 okay so I can get rid of the sine and this is going to become 270 because I took the inverse sine of negative 1 then we divide both sides by 90 to get rid of that 90 and we get 3 so you're going to take your base year and then add an additional three years to it which is 1993 in 1993, that means that your population reaches a minimum of 250 prey. The last question in this set of questions is how many years have passed between maximum populations? That means from maximum to maximum, how many years have gone by? Well, if you're going to go from maximum to maximum, that's basically one full cycle. So you're going to use the k value that's in the equation, and then you're going to plug it into the period equation. So that's going to give you a total of four years between your max population and then your max population. Let's try one more question. Here's a tide question. At low tide, the height of a wave is 1.5 meters above sea level. Six hours later, at high tide, the height of a wave is 6.5 meters above sea level. One full cycle is going to take you about 12 hours. Okay, so they want you to first draw some sort of a graph that models the height of the wave versus the time. And in order to kind of figure that out, what I've done is I've modeled the Ferris wheel question again. So instead of ground level being down here, we have sea level. And then 1.5 meters um, is your low tide. And then going all the way up here, we'll say six hours later, will be high tide. Okay, so then that kind of makes sense because another six would be your entire 12 hours. Okay, so what I've done is I've just figured out some extra information such as uh, the max to the min is about 5 meters and split in half, that's really going to be my amplitude. Then that just means that the center of the Ferris wheel, or sorry, well I guess it's not really a Ferris wheel this time, but you know what I mean. Uh, the center is going to be 1.5 plus an additional 2.5, so we're at 4. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just graph. Here's my height and my time. I took the full cycle of 12 hours, um, but then I added a little arrow just in case we wanted to continue that. Okay, so starting at zero hours, I'm gonna be at 1.5. Then I'm gonna go up three hours, and that'll take me to about four. Then after another three hours, so we're at six hours now, I'm gonna be at 6.5. And then an additional three hours, which is nine, I'm going to be at four again, and then back down to um, 1.5 at 12 hours. Okay, so that looks a lot like the coast graph. And that's why in the next question, they'd probably ask you to map it on a coast equation. So since I already have the vertical shift, which I found up here, the four, and then I could also use um, the 12 hours for my period to figure out my k. I can put all of those pieces of information together into the cos equation. Okay, so 2.5 was my amplitude, but remember this is a reflected cos graph, so I put a negative there. And then we just inserted those other numbers. This does not have a phase shift because again, it's starting from, in this case, um, one of the peaks, so this would be a minimum, but the regular um, cos graph would be starting at a maximum. Then it goes up to another peak and then down to a peak. So it looks like there hasn't been a shift at all other than a vertical shift. No phase shifts. All right. So those were two types of questions that have no angles along the x-axis as independent variables.